rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, and there's the bell. I'm a little before the bell. Well, thank you all for coming and everyone on Facebook and our visitors as well. Thank you for being here at Christ Lutheran Church. Well, we do have some announcements. Um, one of them is very dear to my heart. My daughter Lacey just turned 19 today. So I'm very happy for her. Uh, she'll be starting her junior year at the University of Sioux Falls come this upcoming fall. So she's pretty excited about that. And then um, you might have noticed the mailboxes have been rearranged. We were very blessed to have our new member orientation this past Wednesday. And so we, we rearranged some. And so if you don't see your mailbox where it has been the past maybe 10, 20 years, it has been rearranged. So you're going to have to remember where the new mailbox is. But just check that out. And um, let me see, what are some other announcements? Uh, also, uh, with the weather, uh, it's, it was kind of good this week. It's, it has gotten better. Um, I think we might be getting more rain this week. I pray we don't. But uh, for our dear friends that are still struggling, please let me know. I, I would love to help you if you need any help at your house or anything. So please let me know. I know our friends in other areas aren't so blessed. Uh, down in Rock Valley, again, their school got kind of wrecked up. So I, they're trying to fix it up. And so hopefully other places are having the same luck with people helping them um, get back to semi-normal. But um, I want to read in a text so I say it correctly. Our dear friend Opal Satterholm, uh, please keep her in your prayers. Her health took a grave turn and she was sent to the Sanford Sioux Falls yesterday. Please pray for Lynette and Doug Sieve as they remain at the hospital by her side. So just so everyone is aware of that. Um, again, Opal's only 100 years old, so let's pray she can uh, continue, but um, please keep her in your prayers at this time, and I'll get, my, get it back up. But um, let's see if I'm missing anything, but otherwise, I hope everyone is doing well, and um, please stand. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we perfectly may love you, and worthy magnify your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sins, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's now take a moment of silence for reflection. Oh. 
most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of the Almighty God, Jesus Christ will give to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. As a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you all your sins forgiven. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our first song. Shall we gather at the crown him with many crowns? stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of creation, eternal majesty, you preside over land and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength, pilot us. By your power, preserve us. By your wisdom, instruct us and by your hand protect us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from Lamentations, chapter three, verses 22 through 33. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end, and they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for one to bear the yoke in youth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it, to put one's mouth to the dust, there may yet be hope, to give one's cheek to the smiter and be filled with insults. For the Lord will not reject forever. 
Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love, for he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. The word of God, the word of life. The psalm is Psalm 30, which we'll read by verse, I guess. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, you have brought me up from Sheol, restored me to life from among those who have gone down to the pit. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. By your favor, O Lord, you had established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face. I was dismayed. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? If you have turned my mourning into dancing, you have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 7 through 15. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you may become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something, now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. The word of God, word of life. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. According to Mark, the fifth chapter. When Jesus had crossed again into the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet, and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed him on. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had. And she was no better, but rather she grew worse. 
She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhaging stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of this terrible disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing on you. How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, known what had happened to her, came in fear and trembled, fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith had made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brothers of James. When they came to the house, the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make such a commotion and weep? The child is not dead but sleeping. And then they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talith, Talitha, come, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give, to give her something to eat. Here ends our gospel of the Lord. All right, you may be seated, and if I can have the kids come up. Oh, how are we doing today? Oh, we got a few. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. All right. Well, I have this. Would you mind putting this on, Tova? Would you mind putting this on? There you go. All right, there you go. Woo, you look good. Now, you're going to help me, okay, sir? Can you help me? All right. Oh, I love your shirt. What does it say? Ask me about a cow. <laughs> Moo, right? Moo. Well, that's exciting. You know, you think about a cow, a cow out there, and you get excited when you see him. Well, today, we're talking about King David. He's going to bring the ark to Jerusalem, and he's praising the Lord. You know how to praise the Lord? You ever get excited? Well, in our reading today from Psalm 30, he was getting excited. He was wearing a sackcloth. And you can come up here. Yes, so everybody can see you. And if I can have the crowd, give me some praiseworthy words about Tova. What would you say about Tova? What are some great words you would say about Tova? Cute. Cute. All right. So you're cute. I heard the word cute. So I'm going to put cute. What else do we know about Tova? Anything else? Friendly, friendly, there's a good one. I'm going to put friendly over here. Any other good words I can think of? Beautiful. Oh, you're going to make me spell a big word now. Beautiful. All right. I think I can spell it. How about amazing? Anything else? Can we think of any other words about the great Tova? Smart. Wonderful, wonderful. Oh, I think I just said one. Wonderful. This is, this is excellent. And so, you know, now you can show everybody your big, your sackcloth, right? And, you know, sometimes in life, life can throw us challenges, right? And life can be tough, right? Can life ever get tough? Maybe last week was a little tough for all of us with all the rain, maybe some wet basements, maybe some docks floating away and some other stuff. But, you know... Here we, here's King David. He was praising the Lord after this long journey of taking the ark to Jerusalem. And there were some people that didn't quite like King David. And so you have any of those people sometimes that get a little mean and angry? Yeah. But King David was then praising the Lord for everything he did, taking him to Jerusalem through some tough times. And so when you think of... Uh, when you're having a tough day, think of what people said about you. You're cute, beautiful, smart, friendly, amazing, and wonderful. And so 
The next time any of us get down, think of that sackcloth. Put it on all the wonderful things that people say about you each and every day. And so what do you think? Is she your sister? Is she amazing? Yeah. Can she move like a cow? No. <laughs> she can't move like a cow? <laughs> All right, let us pray. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, hey. thank you for this time of worship and praise, Lord. Thank you for teaching us to praise regardless of what our circumstances may be, just as King David did. In your name we pray. Amen. And you can keep that sackcloth. Hey. Yeah. Covers of horses that own top horse. Yeah. Are you going to dance up here? All right. <laughs> oh, you got to have fun, don't you? Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father and Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, here it was. This was quite a few years ago. But this lady, she woke up, she opened her door, and she see the, sees this dog. And the dog is wagging his tail. And there's the lady's newspaper. So she pets the dog on the head, gives it a few treats, and goes back inside. Well, the next day she was horrified. All of a sudden, she sees eight newspapers in front of her doorstep. She was like, oh. She would then spend the rest of that day or morning taking those newspapers back to those people who were supposed to get them. And well, the thing about life, the thing about praising one another, when you praise each other, it almost becomes overwhelming. It happens so much that you can't contain it. And that's what was happening today in Psalm 30 for King David. It's considered a praise psalm, but when you read Psalm 30, it can almost sound like a lamenting psalm, like he was mad and angry at God. But that's not exactly what it was about. Here's, here's King David. He's given the responsibility to take the ark to Jerusalem. And well, it's kind of a long journey. The thing's kind of heavy. And he's like, well, I need to do this because I know if I don't, my enemies are going to be against me. They're going to mock me. They're going to ridicule me. And I'm guessing King David probably didn't have the easiest path. It probably wasn't a nice paved road that he just got to. Probably a lot of windy roads, probably some animals out there, probably some people trying to attack him because basically he didn't want King David to succeed. But yet, here's King David. He finally gets to Jerusalem. And kind of like Antoba with the little sack cloth, he said in the psalm, you turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, that my heart may sing your praise and not be silent. So David was overly joyed that things actually worked out for the best for him and the people around him. Imagine the joy of taking that ark to Jerusalem. And if you learn more about it, he's actually dancing before the Lord. He's so excited. He can't believe he was successful. And he's praising God. Because like some of us, we can all get a little overconfident in our lives. And then bad things start to happen and we're going, oh, I got a, bit, a little bit too confident. And here's David praising him for not, and kind of humbling him but yet having the grace and mercy so that David could still succeed and knowing that he would always need God in his life. He would praise God regardless of the circumstances that he was in. And the thing is, living that type of a life of praise, it's not only the most enjoyable way to live, but it's also one of the most powerful ways to live your life in praise. And think about it as a train. Praise isn't the caboose of your life. Instead, praise is the engine of your life. You're the one who has to decide each and every morning, like today, am I going to be joyful praising God? Or am I going to be going, eh, it's another day? Are you going to kind of have that pity party about your life and say, my life isn't too good today. I'm going to live that way again and again and again. 
Or did you wake up today saying, it's going to be an awesome day. I got God on my side. I'm going to praise him for everything I have. I might have had a tough time getting out of bed today. Maybe your body isn't in the best of shape. Maybe things aren't going the way you have had planned. But what are some things you can praise God about today? Regardless of that pain, regardless of those things that you may be going through. And, you know, even think about here. Here it is, Jesus. He knows he's about to die. He's about to go to Calvary. And he's telling his disciples at that moment that you are going to have struggling times. Your life is not going to be easy being a follower of Jesus Christ. And I'm sure the disciples are going, now wait a minute. You're the one who's supposed to guide us and lead us. And now you're telling me you're going to leave us? You're going to die for us? You're going to be resurrected? I'm sure their minds were confused. They were probably a little angry, a little sad what was about to happen. Yet, they did have faith. They did believe that Jesus would take care of them during this struggling time. And I don't know about you, but I'd be a little nervous. I'd be like, okay, after these three plus years, you're going to leave me now? You're giving me the responsibility to take care of my own life, to take other people on this mission that you wanted us to start? And that's the thing with our faith, though. We can go through those struggling, those challenging times in our lives, but we know we have God on our side. We know that God will lead us through those storms of our lives. And I don't know about you, but praise, it can be very difficult at times. But praise is a great tool to help us achieve which what we would like to do in our lives. I mean, think about it like this. Let's say someone passes out. What are you going to do? You're probably going to check their pulse to make sure that they're still alive. And that's like our praise, our praise life, our praise pulse. You know, if we're not continually praising God for everything we have in our life, our spiritual life actually be can become dead. And Philippians 4, 6 says this. And remember, this is when Apostle Paul was in prison. He said, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And so, today, you might be worried about something. You might be stressing over something. What does God say? Do not worry. I have your back. I will take care of you. And he's telling you to go in prayer. Pray to the Lord of the thanksgivings that you have today. And you know why? Because God, he's the faithful God to all of us, even at times when we might give up on him. But if you keep doing the right thing, honoring him and expecting his favor, it will come. Have you ever been blessed enough where maybe you're um, waiting in line, like at Walmart or something, and then all of a sudden another line comes up, so you go from last to first? Or maybe you went out to eat, and you're about to pay the bill. And then all of a sudden, someone paid your bill for you. That's God. That's God praising you, taking care of you during this time. But instead, we kind of forget to thank God. We forget to praise God. And we let the devil take over our lives. And he's laughing when that happens. We forget to praise God for all the great circumstances in our lives. And it was kind of like yesterday. You know, it was just a beautiful day. We were outside. We were just enjoying the moment. And I think sometimes we can forget that. We've had a lot of rainy days this past spring and early summer. And so to have a day of yesterday of no wind, no rain, it was just very enjoyable. And so did you know that everyone then who experienced the favor of God to some extent it rains on the believers and non-believers as well. But we need to show that grace, that praise that King David did in Psalm 30 in Jerusalem. And well, the thing is, the praise, it can become like dog. 
like the story about the dog who brought the one newspaper and then the following day brought eight newspapers. The more we praise God, the more praising, the more things we get back in our life. Because God knows that he is the center of our life. He's the one that we wake up to every morning and go to bed every night praising him for the life that we have. And well, it comes to verse thir verse. 4 and 5 in chapter 30 of Psalm today, King David said, Sing the praises of the Lord, you faithful people. Praise his holy name, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay the night, but rejoicing will come in the morning. And then, talking about dogs and praise, um, I found this story on missionaries and Eskimos in Alaska. And these missionaries, they were translating the Bible. And for some of the words, they're pretty common. But the word joy was one of the words they just could not figure out to meet the Eskimos' um, language, per se. And so they were there for maybe a month. And what they noticed every single night was that when the owner would come and feed the dogs, the dogs would be wagging their tail. And they got all excited seeing the owner. They were about to be fed. The owner was about to play with them. And they would wag their tail. And I don't know if any of you have dogs out there, but my dog does the same. Our dog, Winnie, every night we come home from our walk, he's looking out that window and he's wagging his tail. And he gets so excited. It's kind of like kids when they get excited. You can see it on their faces and they're wagging their little bodies and having so much fun. And even us older people, when we have that moment of joy, that moment of praising God in our lives, it's a fun time. You kind of wish it would never end. And well, here it was. Um, it says this, when you translate our verse of the Eskimo style of praise, it would sound like this, wag your tail. Again, I say, wag your tail. In other words, always praise the Lord regardless of your circumstances. So then, who today would love to wag their tail? Amen. We'll now please stand and we'll sing our next hymn, How Great Thou Art. <laughs>
Let us now confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now pray for the whole people of God in Christ and for all people according to their need. Healing Father, as we try to comprehend the destruction that flooding causes to people's lives, our hearts grieve. We ask for you to be with all those who have suffered loss and floods. For those who have lost homes, we pray for shelter and community. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, speak your word of peace among the people of this congregation. Keep us steadfast in faith, passionate in worship, and persistent in prayer. Make us tireless in loving service to all who are overwhelmed by waves of suffering, sorrow, or shame. Lord, in your mercy. Keep this nation, Lord, under your guiding eye, and knit us together in the common purpose of knowing we are intended to be one nation under God, with liberty and justice for all. Bestow wisdom, prudence, and goodness on all the earthly rulers, especially in our own land. Inflame them only with the earnest desire to love justice, seek mercy, and walk humbly before you, their Lord and King. Lord, in your mercy. Loving Father, clothe all who wear the sackcloth of suffering with the clean linen of salvation and joy. We lift before you the needs of Opal's family. Joyce, Harris J, Rick, Matt, Ken, Josh, Dale, Gwen, Kim, Robert Harris S, Krista, Diane, Doug, and Harriet. Give them such confidence in you that they constantly turn to you for help. Grant skill and tenderness to all who love and care for them. Use them to ease suffering, restore hope, and strengthen praise. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray today. Trust in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
sea and sky. You are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who rose beyond the bounds of death, and on this day, as he has promised, poured out your spirit of life and power upon those chosen disciples. At this the whole world exults in boundless joy. And in the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, he broke it, he gave it all to eat, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, gave it all to drink, saying, This is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us now say the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For the gifts of God, for the people of God, all is ready and all are welcome.
stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We'll now sing our final hymn, What a Fellowship, What a Joy Divine. And serve the Lord. Thanks.